from St. Paul's Baptist Church. Here's the scoop. The doors of our church are open. We invite you to join us for worship each weekend at 9 a.m. at St. Paul's North, at 10 a.m. online, or at 11.30 a.m. at St. Paul South. Please review the updated reopening strategy on our website at myspbc.org or by scanning the QR code for details on attending in-person worship. To join us online, download our mobile app or join us at myspbc.tv, Facebook, YouTube, Roku TV, and Apple TV. To join us by phone, call 855-905-7023. To subscribe, please press number one when prompted, and you'll receive a call each week when worship and Bible study goes live. Sunday School for Imagination Children and SMB students is now open at St. Paul's North. Students can find a Sunday School group by visiting myspbc.org or by scanning the QR code on the screen. Plan now to celebrate our 113th church anniversary, Sunday, November 20th. This year's church anniversary theme, I Remember When. We have wonderful stories we can share over the years, but which ones stand out the most to you that bring you the most joy? Make a 20-second video or less sharing your best SPBC I Remember When moment. Upload video to myspbc.info slash I Remember When. We are grateful for the sacrifices that have brought us this far and the sacrifices that continue to seed our future. Give a sacrificial donation of $113 to our Legacy Fund at myspbc.info slash legacy to support our long-term needs towards scholarships, capital improvement, and ministry. Clutter. All of us have it. Few of us want it. Fewer still know how to manage it. Clutter cramps, crowds, and at times confuses us. Clutter reveals our secrets. It's a personal made-to-order problem physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. Is it possible to clear the clutter? That's the question that Senior Pastor Dr. Lance Watson tackles in this new message series because battling clutter is not a one and done, but a continuing process of making room for what's really important in life. We invite you to join us on this four-week journey to unclutter our lives. Series begins November 6th. Join us and 30 of our community partners for our annual RVA Community Thanksgiving Food Distribution. Save the date for Thursday, November 17th from 3.30 to 6 p.m. at the Richmond Raceway, 600 East Laburnum Avenue. Our goal is to feed 1,500 families. Please help us accomplish this goal by donating $25 cash cards. For all your questions, email outreach at myspbc.org. Early voting has begun. You may now vote in person or absentee. Virginia districts and representation has changed due to census data, so be sure to know where and for whom you're voting this election. Young voters who turn 18 by November 8th may pre-register and vote on Election Day. You can register to vote, check your registration status, find your polling place, and apply for absentee voting at myspbc.info slash vote. Are you a veteran? Please join us for a celebration brunch on Saturday, November 12th at St. Paul's North, 4247 Creighton Road, from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. The event is free, but seating is limited, so register today at myspbc.info slash vets celebration. We're looking forward to honoring our hashtag veterans with lots of laughter, food, fun, fellowship, photos, music, recognition, and more. Questions? Email outreach at myspbc.org. The Student Loan Debt Relief Application is live at studentaid.gov slash debt relief slash apply. Remember that studentaid.gov is the only place to apply for one-time student loan debt relief. 
You can apply anytime before the end of next year, December 31st, 2023. If you submitted your application during the beta period, you're all set. You don't need to apply again. Learn more about debt relief on the Frequently Asked Questions page, studentaid.gov slash debt relief. The St. Paul's Baptist Church Outreach, in partnership with Walmart, invites you to a vaccination clinic on Sunday, November 6th from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. at St. Paul's North, 4247 Creighton Road. Take advantage of this opportunity to ensure that you and your family are up to date on vaccines, COVID-19, flu, pneumonia, and are better prepared for a healthy holiday season. For questions or assistance with registration, please email outreach at myspbc.org. Fire on Fridays is back this November at the St. Paul's Baptist Church. When I start praying, I pray like I already got the victory. When I think of the goodness of Jesus, my soul shouts. Go ahead and give God glory. Give him glory now. Don't miss Fire on Fridays at the St. Paul's Baptist Church. Go to myspbc.org for more. Thanksgiving is near, and we are here to help you with your dinner plans. If you live or plan to be in the Richmond area this Thanksgiving, please visit myspbc.info slash Thanksgiving Meals or call 804-643-6171 to place your order. We have many new food options, from full course meals to side items to enhance your Thanksgiving celebration. We also have our usual items you love, like collard greens, macaroni and cheese, and potato salad, to name a few. All orders must be placed by noon, Thursday, November 17th. On our order form, you will also see an opportunity to donate. We hope you will support our efforts as we team up with members of our care and outreach teams and the diaconate to provide hot meals to a group of seniors and people experiencing specific disabilities. Our vision of finding needs and meeting them is embedded in all we do. Thank you for your time and attention. This has been The Scoop. Just wanna praise you. Come on, say it. For forever.
forever. Good morning, St. Paul's everywhere. As it has been written in Psalm 117, praise God, everybody. Applaud God, all people. His love has taken over our lives. God's faithful ways are eternal. I should have a big amen right there. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Gracious and eternal God, we call on your most holy and righteous name. You alone are worthy of all the praise, honor, and glory. God, inhabit our praise both individually and collectively as we connect during this virtual worship experience on this communion Sunday, on this first Sunday in October. Allow your presence and power and peace to prevail in our lives as we worship you today. Allow our souls to rejoice, our burdens to be lifted, our bodies to be healed, and our faith to be fortified as we experience the fullness of your grace, love, compassion, and goodness. Lord, bless us uniquely as only you can. In the mighty, miraculous name of Jesus the Christ, we pray. And all who would agree with that prayer, shout with me, hallelujah and amen. Hello, St. Paul's everywhere. I'm Reverend Jamie Duncan, the Life Stage Pastor for the Encore Life Stage, St. Paul's Baptist Church for everyone who are 50 something. Yes, on behalf of our senior pastor, Reverend Dr. Lance Watson and our fabulous first lady, Rose Watson, I want to welcome you to worship. Yes, yes. We are excited that you are with us today. If you're connecting for the first time, let us know by simply texting the word NEW to 804-643. Yes, 
uh, 4769 so that we can extend a friendly welcome to you. If you're on social media, greet the person before you and behind you in the chat space. If you like something, hit the like button. And if you think of someone that you would like to bless, hit the share button. Yes, if the message or the music move you, yes, we would like for you to comment about it in the chat space. Yes, we don't want to worship for you. We want to worship with you. Yes, Encore, use your emojis. That's across the life stages. Every life stage, use your color emojis to participate in this worship celebration. Yes, we want to worship with you. We want to celebrate with you. We want to magnify the Lord together with you. Good morning, my brothers and sisters. What a joy and honor and a privilege it is to share the word of God with you. 
thank you for sharing with us at St. Paul's Everywhere. And today, we're beginning a new series of messages entitled Clutter. Everybody everywhere say it with me, clutter. All of us have it, few of us want it, few are still know how to manage it, clutter. It cramps, it crowds, and at times it confuses us. It reveals our secrets. It's a personal made to order problem, physically, emotionally, mentally, and spiritually, clutter. How do we clear the clutter from our lives? That's going to be our focus over the next few weeks. So travel with me today to the textual territory that is 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses three through five. I wanna share it from the New Century version of the Bible. Listen for a word from God. We do live in the world, but we do not fight in the same way the world fights. Hear that. We do live in the world, but we do not fight in the same way the world fights. We fight with weapons that are different from those the world uses. Our weapons have power from God that can destroy the enemy's strong places. We destroy people's arguments and every proud thing that raises itself against the knowledge of God. We capture every thought and make it give up and obey Christ. The word of God for the people of God, all praise be to God. And from that text, with the aid, anointing, and assistance of the Holy Spirit, we want to teach today from the topic, Unclutter Your Mind. Would you mind typing that in the chat space for me right now for the benefit of those who share with us? Unclutter Your Mind. All change starts in the mind. Write that down. You don't change your life by changing your life. You change your life by changing your mind. All of us have a mindset that has been shaped by people. You inherited more than mannerisms, moods, or money from your parents and ancestors. You inherited a mindset, a way of seeing and interpreting reality. All of us have a mindset that have been shaped by people or sometimes by pain because pain can shift and shape how we think. And this is critically important to acknowledge, admit, and accept, because if my mindset is inconsistent with the blueprint of God's will displayed in God's word, it's going to lead me to irritation, frustration, and aggravation. And that's fundamentally the teaching of our text today. Paul, the gospel globetrotter, the tent maker from Tarsus, the articulate African apostle in this letter to the Christians in Corinth deploys this military metaphor to teach them and subsequently teach us about the challenge of moving from salvation to transformation. Because it's one thing to have your soul saved, it's another thing to have your mind changed. Can I say it differently? You can have a new heart, but still live defeated because you have an old mind. Somebody's got to grab hold of that. This is critical for elevation and transformation in life. You need the right mindset. Have you ever thought about why you think what you think? not just what you think, but why you think it. Because underneath the what you think is the mindset that determines why you think what you think. Most of the time it's unconscious. We just think it. We never ask, why do I see it that way? Where did that thought come from? It's all about your mindset. Everybody everywhere say mindset. The way your mind is set. It's going to lead you to victory or defeat, success or failure, humiliation or inspiration. And we are knowingly or unknowingly living in a war zone. This war is not physical, it's spiritual. It's being played out on the battlefield of our minds, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 12 months a year, 365 days annually. The scrimmages are spiritual, yet constantly manifest in the physical. It is a battle being waged between the forces of life and death, good and evil, heaven and hell. The battle is definitive and decisive because whatever gets your mind 
gets you. Did you hear what I said? Consider that it's not accidental that when you ride a motorcycle, they now require you by law to wear a helmet. You are not compelled to wear elbow pads or knee pads, although you can injure both of them in a fall, but you are mandated to wear a helmet. Why? Because in an accident, a brain injury can be traumatic. And in the same manner, it's vital for each of us to know how to develop, use, protect, expand, and unclutter our minds because whatever is in your mind is going to be in your life. You've got to grab hold of this. Clutter creates confusion. And somebody knows what I'm talking about. It's the text of Romans 7 where Paul points out how we can know the right thing but be unable to do the right thing. How sometimes we can know what to do and just don't do it. And sometimes we know what we shouldn't do and we do it anyway. What's happening? There's a battle going on in our mind. The weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world, he says. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds in the New International Version. We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. Those are cognitive words. They are words that deal with the mind. Argument, pretension, knowledge. What is a stronghold? A stronghold is not something that has a strong hold on us. It's a mindset that keeps truth from getting to us. I just said something right there. A stronghold is a worldview, a false idea that dominates our lives. Fear, worry, guilt, prejudice, bias, resentment, bitterness, jealousy, and pettiness can all be strongholds. And the teaching of the text is that these things have to be torn down in order for us to be built up into the people God intends for us to be. Somebody somewhere type, tear it down. Look at the text again. We take captive every thought and make it obedient to Christ. This phrase, take captive, is a Greek phrase that literally means to capture, to conquer, or to force into submission. How do you do that? How do you make your mind mine? Did you get that? My late pastor and mentor, the inimitable Dr. Frederick George Sampson, was the first to share this concept with me that I now share with you. He said that thoughts are like soldiers. Image that if you're going to win a battle, your soldiers can't just run all over the battlefield. There has to be discipline. You can't let your thoughts similarly run off in every direction. And I've got a funny feeling and a sneaky suspicion, as my friend and colleague, Dr. Marcus Cosby, would say that I'm preaching to somebody right now who has been struggling with spiritual ADD. Your thoughts run all over the place. You didn't intend for them to go there, but they did. When you need to ponder, your thoughts start to wander. When you want to pray, your thoughts drift away. Who am I preaching to now? How do we discipline our thought life so that we can do the things we need to do and want to do? How do we gain control of the clutter in our minds so that we can focus our energies on doing what is best? Because a mind is a terrible thing to waste. Thank you, United Negro College Fund. What steps should we take to unclutter our mind? Well, here it is. Number one, don't believe everything you think. Hear me, not everything we think is true. We know that instinctively, but often fail to practice it actually. Can I say it differently? Just because you think it doesn't make it true. This is a critical bridge to cross because you will act in accord with what you think and feel is true. So it's crucial to acknowledge up front that what we think is not always true just because we think it. 
newsflash, sin is a form of mental illness. Did you hear what I said? It is self-inflicted nonsense, and all of us have been infected. Everybody's mind is flawed, frail, and fractured. Sin has damaged our relationship with God, creation, ourselves, and with each other. We inhabit an imperfect world as imperfect people, which means that none of us by default think clearly all the time. I wonder, have I got any people who are honest enough listening to me who will admit that you don't get it right all the time? Some of the things that go into and come out of our minds are just flat out wrong. For God-given ideas are inspiration, satanic suggestions are temptation, and the adversary is constantly peddling and promoting alternative facts, also known as lies, in our lives. Watch television, log on to the internet, watch reels on Instagram, stories on Facebook, moments on Twitter, vignettes on TikTok, and you'll see a whole host of false ideas being promoted. If you only had more money, if you only dress like this, if you only look like that, if you only connect with this crowd or that one, you'll be happy, you'll be loved, you'll be secure, you'll be popular, you'll be set for life. Lies. And if you permit them to run across the landscape of your mind enough without taking them captive, they will take the building blocks of your belief and build a stronghold. Jeremiah 17, 9 says, the heart is deceitful above all things and beyond cure. Who can understand it? The heart is deceitful. What does that mean? It means that you and I have an amazing ability, hear this, to lie to ourselves. We do it all the time. We tell ourselves things are okay when we know they are not. We tell ourselves things are bad when they are actually better than we're willing to admit. We lie to ourselves all the time. I didn't eat that much. I didn't spend that much. I didn't say that much. We lie to ourselves all the time. Why? because the heart is deceitful. We can't figure out our own motives, let alone figure out somebody else's. And here's the key point. Neither you nor I can be trusted to tell ourselves the truth all the time. You cannot be trusted to tell you the truth all the time. Just because you have an idea or an opinion doesn't make it true. Thoughts must be tested. Somebody say that out loud. Thoughts must be tested. Why? Because some of us have bald spots, but all of us have blind spots. We can't see what we can't see. We have background biases. We see things as we are, not as they are. Can I show this to you? Did you know that the optic nerve is the only nerve connected directly to your brain? That being the case, you would think that when you see something, there would be more electrical impulses moving from the outside in rather than the inside out. But that's not the case. Scientifically, when we are in the process of seeing something, there are more impulses moving from your brain to your eye than from your eye to your brain. Don't miss this, that your brain is telling your eye what to see. We don't always see things the way they are. We see them as our brain wants us to see them. We see things through the lens of our background our experience, our pain, our hurt, our disappointments, and our fears. And that's why you can put four people on a corner, let them all see the same accident, and get four different accounts of what happened. Why? Because they're all seeing it from their own perspective. So we jump to conclusions and get trapped by categories. It's either this or that, when a lot of times it is neither. That's why 2 Corinthians 13 suggests Examine yourselves to see whether you are in the faith. Test yourself. That means don't let your former story dictate your future narrative. Unclutter your mind. Don't believe everything you think. Can I go a little further? Number two, write it down. Guard your mind against 
garbage. Most of you work with computers and digital devices every day. Do you remember or know the cliche GIGO, G-I-G-O? It stands for garbage in, garbage out. This cliche reminds us that whatever you put into your computer is what you're going to get out. If your input is flawed, your output will be as well. And what's true for your computer or digital device is also true for your mind. If you put garbage into your mind, that's what will come out in your life. Everybody everywhere say, clear the clutter. Now somebody type it in the chat space. Proverbs 15, 14 in the living translation of the Bible, living Bible translation says a wise person is hungry for truth while a fool feeds on trash. To unclutter your mind, you're going to have to be selective in what you permit to live there because what you permit to live in your mind is going to determine your stress and your success in life. Go to any nutritionist worth their salt and they'll tell you there are three basic kinds of food. Brain food that makes you smarter, junk food that tastes good but makes no lasting contribution, and toxic food which poisons your system and can do real damage over the long haul. This is true, friends, not only with your gut, but with your brain. Three types of mental food, brain food, things that encourage you, inspire you, build you up, make you smarter, more successful, more faithful, more skilled, and more confident. Junk food, things that are not necessarily poisonous, they are just not helpful. It may fill you, it may fill, but it doesn't build. It may stuff, but it won't be enough. And then there's toxic food, filling your mind with that which is harmful, counterproductive, hateful, bigoted, biased, and injurious. The songwriter of Psalm 101 verse 3 said, I will not set before my eyes anything worthless. Don't trade worthwhile for worthless. Are you listening to me? If you want to proceed progressively in your life, you've got to guard your mind against garbage. Don't let trash accumulate in your thinking. I know, here's the question. Well, Pastor, how do I guard my mind against clutter? Two suggestions, conversational prayer and concentrated focus. Somebody write it down. Here's the first one, conversational prayer. What is that? It's having an ongoing conversation with God without saying amen. Talk to God with your eyes wide open. The second one is concentrated focus. It's a decision to focus on the worthwhile and block out the worthless. Some things and some people do not deserve your attention. I'm sorry to be the one to tell you, but let the scripture speak so you won't take it personal. Philippians 4, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank God for all that God has done. If you do this, you will experience God's peace, which is far more wonderful than the human mind can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and mind. So fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right. Think about things that are pure and lovely and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Note two instructions in that text. You should study it. Here's number one, pray about everything. How do I do that? Have an ongoing conversation. You talk to God about anything and about everything. That's number one. But number two, the second instruction, fix your thought. That's concentrated focus. The way you remove bad ideas is not to resist them, but to replace them. Did you hear what I just said? Don't focus on what you don't want. Focus on what you do want. Can I show you why this is true? Don't think of the pink elephant, the pink elephant, the pink elephant, the pink elephant. What did you just think about? the pink elephant, to remove bad ideas, don't resist them. You've got to replace them. Guard your mind against garbage. That's number two. But number three, 
never stop learning. Make learning a lifetime habit. In fact, did you know the word disciple means learner? To follow Christ is to be a learner. In Matthew chapter 11, verse 28, Jesus said, come to me, all of you who are stressed out and tired, weary and heavy laden, and learn of me, learn from me. That's what it means to be a disciple. A lot of people graduated from school and said, I'm finished and you were, you'll get that later on. If you wanna live, you've got to keep learning, growing and developing. School is never out. All leaders are learners. The moment you stop learning, you stop leading because you can never take anybody further than you've gone yourself. You can learn from anybody if you know the right questions because we are all ignorant just on different subjects. You know some things I don't know. I know some things you don't know. Others know some things that neither of us know. Everybody's ignorant just on different subjects and that's why you can learn from anybody and everybody if you will ask the right questions. Asking questions is a sign of intelligence. It's in the Bible. Proverbs 20 verse 5 says, counsel in the heart of man is like deep water, but a man, a woman of understanding will draw it out. Everybody's got a reservoir of some things that they can teach you. The key thing is being humble enough to listen, learn, and be taught by them. You can even learn from people with whom you disagree. Wait, even a broke clock is right twice a day. Proverbs 18, 15 says, the mind of a smart person is eager to get knowledge. The wise person listens to learn more. Proverbs 10, 14 says, wise men store up knowledge. How do we store up knowledge, two ways, reading and relationships. Could I get 52 of you to say that with me? Reading and relationships, hear me well. Your life will largely be influenced and determined by the books you read and the people you meet. That was worth the price of admission, whatever it took you to get online today. We've got to be intentional about both reading and relationships. Proverbs 19.8 says, those who get wisdom do themselves a favor and those who love learning will succeed. How many of you by posting your upheld hands would like to succeed? Those who love learning, the Bible says, will succeed. How do we learn? I've already told you, reading and relationships. And that's one of the incredible benefits of belonging to a small group, whether in person or virtual. It's wise to learn from experience, but listen to me, it's wiser to learn from the experience of others. I'm helping somebody here today, and it's a lot less painful. Never stop learning. That's number three. But number four, renew your mind daily with the word of God. Remember what I said in the opening, you don't change your life by changing your life. You change your life by changing your mind. I see I've got to help you with this. Think about it for a moment, that when a woman gives birth to a child in a normal delivery, the baby has to leave the womb and enter this world head first. They leave the world that they have known and enter this new world head first. The delivery is in danger if the baby is breached, coming out in the wrong way. By deliberate design, the child is born head first. Can I tell you something? This may shout you. I hope it will. God is going to bring you into your next dimension of life head first. If you can get your head out of whatever you're in, your life has to follow. Somebody ought to say, I'm coming out head first. Somebody ought to type, I'm coming out head first. Somebody should be able to shout on that point because if you can get your mind there, it's only a, time, a matter of time before your life will follow. You can say, I'm on my way to victory, preacher, because my mind is there. I'm on my way to joy because my mind 
mind is there. I'm on my way to financial freedom because my mind is there. I'm on my way to peace because my mind is there. My life may not be there yet, but my mind is there. So I'm going to keep on pressing until the two things line up. This is Romans 12 too, that says, do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed. How? By the renewing of your mind. Do you want to know God's will for you? You have to be transformed. Well, how can I be transformed? It's in that text. By the renewing of your mind. Well, how do I renew my mind? By daily engagement with the word of God. God's word has the power to renew our minds. Ephesians 5.26 calls it the washing of water of the word. God's word will wash away error, wash away distortion, wash away dysfunction, wash away low self-esteem, wash away pettiness, wash away distractions, wash away disruptions, wash away inaccuracies from your mind. God's word will clarify confusion, define destiny, and elevate opportunity. Let me make it plain. Because according to multiple studies, one of the biggest time wasters in the workplace are computer-related malfunctions. One study found that the average person spends 22 to 25 minutes a day trying to fix some computer-related issue. The estimated cost to larger companies in the U.S. is somewhere in the ballpark of $4,000 a minute. But one easy solution for many of these issues could be as simple as rebooting your device. Over half did you hear me? Over 50% of all computer problems that technicians deal with are fixed with a simple reboot. And the reason that computers often fail is that they have system processes continually running in the background. These processes leave behind an electronic footprint that takes up memory, RAM, random access memory. And when you shut the device down, when you reboot it, these programs and processes come to an end, allowing you to start on a clean slate with a faster and more efficient device. Does anybody see the connection? Let the word of God reboot your mind. Let God hit control, alt, delete. Control the negative, anxious, fearful, guilt-written thoughts. All give you alternative feelings of peace, hope, love, joy, and power, and delete the destructive effects that the enemy intended. How do we unclutter our minds? One more. Let God stretch your imagination. You've got to have a dream, a vision, a goal for your life, your family, and your future. If you can't dream it, you can't do it. Let God stretch your imagination. Acts 2.17 says, God proclaim in the last days I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy and your young men will see visions and your old men will dream dreams. Everybody everywhere say visions and dreams. Now could I get 102 of you to type visions and dreams. Proverbs 29 18 says where there is no vision the people perish. Visions guide us, direct us and discipline us without a dream without a vision. You don't live, you just exist. Nothing happens until somebody somewhere starts dreaming. Everything that has ever been accomplished in the world started because somebody dreamed it. Every building started as a dream in an architect's mind. Every piece of art, every piece of music started as a dream in an artist's mind. Every athlete who ever won a championship dreamed of winning first. It all starts with dreaming. The quality of your life Life is largely determined by the dreams you allow God to give you by stretching your imagination. Hear me well. Imagination is a preview of tomorrow. Preach, preacher, I'm trying. You learn from yesterday. You live in today and you dream about tomorrow. Napoleon once said, imagination rules the world. Einstein said, imagination is more important than knowledge because knowledge is limited, but imagine 
imagination goes on. Let God stretch your imagination. Can I ask you something? What are you believing God for in the future? What's your dream? What would you attempt if you knew you could not fail? That powerful preacher, Dr. Clarence LeVon Franklin, used to say on his broadcast in Detroit every Sunday night when I was a boy, aim for the moon. And if you fall among the stars, you'll still be on high ground. God is the creator, and we are most like God when we are being created. If you're not creating, you're decaying, you're drifting, and you're dying. Today is a good day to let God stretch your imagination, to imagine new answers, new solutions, new questions, new possibilities, new products, new services, new remedies, new strategies, and new potentialities. You can't live out of your memory. That's what has been. You've got to live out of your imagination. That's what can be. And why should we do this? You do it for the glory of God. I'm in Ephesians 3 where Paul wrote, now glory be to God who by his mighty power at work within us is able to do far more than we would ever dare to ask or even dream of. Think of the biggest dream, the greatest vision you could ever have. And God says, I can top that. For God is able to do far more than we would ever dare to ask or even dream of infinitely beyond our highest prayers and desires and our thoughts and hopes any given day. Let me explain it like this. Any given day, I fly a lot and this occurred to me, any given day, 23,000 scheduled flights take off and land at American airports at any given time, 5,000 of those airplanes are simultaneously airborne. That means that approximately 1 million people are flying at 300 miles an hour at 30,000 feet above the planet at any given moment, like right now. A hundred years ago, though, that was all the stuff of science fiction. Then two brothers, you know them, Wilbur and Orville Wright, turned science fiction in the science fact. Don't miss this. The Wright brothers' dream of flying traces back to an autumn day in 1878 when their father, who was a pastor, what can I say, brought home a rather unique toy. Using a rubber band to twirl its rotor, a miniature bamboo helicopter flew into the air, much like our mechanized toy helicopters, but it broke after a few flights. But instead of giving up on it and throwing it away, and going on to the next toy, the Wright brothers made their own, and the dream of flying was conceived. A quarter century later, 25 years later, on December 17, 1903, Orville himself went airborne for 12 gravity-defying seconds in the first powered piloted flight in human history. It's almost impossible now to imagine life as we know it without airplanes. But like every innovation, every revolution, every breakthrough, somebody had to imagine it first. And that chain reaction defies gravity and stretches the imagination because without knowing it, the Wright brothers created the airline industry, the FAA and the TSA. I'm sure it never crossed their minds, but their flying faith is the reason why a million people are speeding through the troposphere right now as I preach. It was two preacher's kids, PKs, what's up, shout out, who punched your ticket when God stretched their imagination. Does anybody hear what I'm saying? Because if God can stretch your imagination, God can change your situation, your destination, establish your foundation, stimulate your determination, prevent your elimination, defy your limitations, provide your motivation, enhance your communication, prove your qualifications, provide your manifestation, increase your gratification, sustain your augmentation, strengthen your organization, 
organization, arrange your verification, guarantee your installation, and produce your confirmation. If God can stretch your imagination, because who would have ever imagined that Thomas Edison tinkering with wires in his workshop could create the light bulb? Who would have ever imagined that George Washington Carver would have discovered 300 different products in peanuts, soybeans, pecans, and sweet potatoes. Who would have ever imagined that Madam C.J. Walker would turn her scalp ailment into a multi-million dollar hair care enterprise less than 10 years after the end of slavery? Who would have ever imagined that Rosa Parks sitting down would cause the whole world to stand up for freedom, dignity, and equality? Who would have ever imagine that a 26-year-old preacher from Georgia could energize the entire nation through the power of his words and the strength of his conviction to grant civil rights to all of its citizens. Can I go a little further? Who would have ever imagined that Noah could build an ark to save his family, that Abraham could locate a city whose maker and builder was God, that Isaac could redig his father's wells and continue his father's legacy, that Jacob could rest with an angel and survive. Who would have ever imagined that Moses could split the sea like a sidewalk with a shepherd's staff, that Joshua could conquer Jericho by walking around the walls, that Gideon could defeat the Midianites with just 300 soldiers, that David could overcome the giant Goliath with a stone and a sling, that Daniel could live through the lion's den, that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego could endure the fiery furnace. Who would have ever imagined that Jesus could endure the cross, despise the shame, get up on Sunday morning with all power in his hands? But here's the shout. He did. Did you hear what I said? He did. He got up on Sunday. And what God did with them, God will do for you if you let God unclutter your mind. Amen. And my brother, my sister, I want to present a clear proposition to you today as you unclutter your mind, and that is to put your trust in Jesus Christ. Are you thinking clearly about God, about life? God has made it possible for us to draw near to God through the sacrifice, life, death, resurrection, and ongoing ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ. God offers to you the free gift of grace. All you've got to do is say yes, and Christ will come into your heart. He'll change what needs to be changed, augment what needs to be augmented. He will help you to become the person that God created you to be. I like to say, when you get God in the right place, everything else will fall in place. Wherever you are in the world, I'd love to be your pastor. The St. Paul's family would love to be your church. We have members in 32 different states across the United States with whom we are growing in grace. We are partnered in ministry. We are seeking to help them grow and to rise and become all that God has created them to be. We would love to have you to be one of them. And it's easy to be a part. All you've got to do is text the word JOIN to 804-643-4769 or use the information on the lower third of this screen to respond. Our team is on standby. We would love for you to respond today. Unclutter your mind. Make a clear choice, and that choice is Jesus Christ. We're waiting on you and praying that you would.
is blessing you right now. He woke us up this morning and started us on our way. The Lord is blessing us right now. We are blessed. We are blessed. We are blessed. We've got clothing, shelter, and strength. We are blessed. Am I talking to myself? Is there any witnesses sharing this stream? Go on and post your uplifted hands in the chat space. If you know you are blessed, if you know God has been good to you, I'd like to remind us of that as we prepare to worship God through our giving, because giving is an act of gratitude. 
If you know God has been good to you, gratitude is appropriate. It's appropriate when we receive gifts to say thank you. That's grandmama's teaching. That's mama's teaching. That's big mama's teaching to say thank you when we receive gifts. So we prepare today to worship God through giving our tithe and giving our offering. And it's easy to give at St. Paul's. All the ways to give are listed on the lower third of this screen. You can give by taking your digital device and pointing it at the QR code listed below. Tap on the QR code, it'll take you to PushPay where you can give your gift. You can give by using the other information listed there, including writing a check and dropping it in the mail, going to our website, myspbc.org, and giving your gift there by tapping the big green give button. However you give and whatever you give, accept our thanksgiving. For when you receive a gift, gratitude is appropriate. It's appropriate to say thank you. So here I thank you in advance because your giving makes our ministry possible. Can I pray with you as we prepare to give together? Almighty God, we acknowledge that you are the giver of every good and perfect gift. We thank you for your goodness in our lives. And we come now to give our tithe and to give our offering as expressions of our gratitude. You have given so much to us. We now give back a portion of what you have provided to support the ministry that you have established in the world. Bless the gift and the giver and grant that these gifts might be used to be a blessing to your people and to expand your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. As we share the music and prepare our communion elements, yes, today is Communion Sunday, let's give generously to the Lord. check myself. So I got some stuff to bless them with. Uh -huh. Y'all coming along. Your blessing is on the way. You about to get a check. A major check. So make sure you be a blessing to somebody else. Come on, Kirk. How that thing go? <laughs> because I'm blessed. Help me to bless somebody else.
today. And on the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread and after he had blessed it, he broke it and he gave it to his disciples and said, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same manner also, he took the cup and when he had supped, he gave it to them and said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. As often as you do it, you do it in remembrance of me. So we pause on this first Sunday in November to remember the sacrifice, the life, the death, the burial, the resurrection, the ascension, the intercession, and the soon coming return of the Lord Jesus Christ. He prayed, let us pray. God, we thank you for these moments of communion, and we pray now that you would use them to bring us closer to you and closer to one another. Remind us now of our obligation to live a devoted and sacred life that men and women might see you shining in us and be drawn to your grace and your goodness. Bless these elements and all who share them in the name of Jesus, amen. In his name, let us eat and drink together. And we do these things in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus, amen. Our friends, I hope that you have been blessed sharing this worship celebration today. This is a season to clear the clutter out of your mind, out of your life. That's what we're going to be teaching on over the next few weeks. We hope that you will join us for every single installment of this series, Unclutter Your Mind. And one of the ways you can do that is by downloading the GPS document that's established by links in the chat space so you can discuss this message with your family and your friends. If this message has been a blessing to you, would you now be a blessing to somebody else by first clicking the like button? That'll move us up using the algorithm that the social media companies use to establish where content is placed in the feed of people with whom you network. And then secondly, by clicking the share arrow and sharing this stream with somebody else. Somebody you know today needs to unclutter their mind. Won't you help them in that direction by sharing this stream? I want to invite you to share the final blessing. We call it the benediction. It's a big church word, a big religious word but simply means the final and parting blessing. And we share it in the spirit of the African principle of Ubuntu. It's going to be printed on the screen. Would you read it with me now? I am because we are. We are because God is. You are not alone. Never, 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 never alone. God is with you and so are we. We love you and there ain't a thing you can do about it except pray fervently, live authentically, love genuinely, and unclutter your mind. From St. Paul's Baptist Church, here's the scoop. The doors of our church are open. We invite you to join us for worship each weekend at 9 a.m. at St. Paul's North, at 10 a.m. online, or at 11.30 a.m. at St. Paul South. Please review the updated reopening strategy on our website at myspbc.org or by scanning the QR code for details on attending in-person worship. To join us online, download our mobile app or join us at myspbc.tv, Facebook, YouTube, Roku TV, and Apple TV. To join us by phone, call 855-905-905. 7023. To subscribe, please press number one when prompted, and you'll receive a call each week when worship and Bible study goes live. Sunday School for Imagination Children and SMB students is now open at St. Paul's North. 
Students can find a Sunday School group by visiting myspbc.org or by scanning the QR code on the screen. Plan now to celebrate our 113th church anniversary, Sunday, November 20th. This year's church anniversary theme, I Remember When. We have wonderful stories we can share over the years, but which ones stand out the most to you that bring you the most joy? Make a 20-second video or less sharing your best SPBC I Remember When moment. Upload video to myspbc.info slash I Remember When. We are grateful for the sacrifices that have brought us this far and the sacrifices that continue to seed our future. Give a sacrificial donation of $113 to our Legacy Fund at myspbc.info slash legacy to support our long-term needs towards scholarships, capital improvement, and ministry. Clutter. All of us have it. Few of us want it. Fewer still know how to manage it. Clutter cramps, crowds, and at times confuses us. Clutter reveals our secrets. It's a personal made-to-order problem physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. Is it possible to clear the clutter? That's the question that Senior Pastor Dr. Lance Watson tackles in this new message series, because battling clutter is not a one-and-done but a continuing process of making room for what's really important in life. We invite you to join us on this four-week journey to unclutter our lives. Series begins November 6th. Join us and 30 of our community partners for our annual RVA Community Thanksgiving Food Distribution. Save the date for Thursday, November 17th from 3.30 to 6 p.m. at the Richmond Raceway, 600 East Laburnum Avenue. Our goal is to feed 1,500 families. Please help us accomplish this goal by donating $25 cash cards. For all your questions, email outreach at myspbc.org. Early voting has begun. You may now vote in person or absentee. Virginia districts and representation has changed due to census data, so be sure to know where and for whom you're voting this election. Young voters who turn 18 by November 8th may pre-register and vote on Election Day. You can register to vote, check your registration status, find your polling place, and apply for absentee voting at myspbc.info slash vote. Are you a veteran? Please join us for a celebration brunch on Saturday, November 12th at St. Paul's North, 4247 Creighton Road from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. The event is free, but seating is limited, so register today at myspbc.info slash vets celebration. We're looking forward to honoring our hashtag veterans with lots of laughter, food, fun, fellowship, photos, music, recognition, and more. Questions? Email outreach at myspbc.org. The Student Loan Debt Relief Application is live at studentaid.gov slash debtrelief slash apply. Remember that studentaid.gov is the only place to apply for one-time student loan debt relief. You can apply anytime before the end of next year, December 31st, 2023. If you submitted your application during the beta period, you're all set. You don't need to apply again. Learn more about debt relief on the Frequently Asked Questions page, studentaid.gov slash debt relief. The St. Paul's Baptist Church Outreach, in partnership with Walmart, invites you to a vaccination clinic on Sunday, November 6th from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. at St. Paul's North, 4247 Creighton Road. Take advantage of this opportunity to ensure that you and your family are up to date on vaccines, COVID-19, flu, pneumonia, and are better prepared for a healthy holiday season. For questions or assistance with registration, please email outreach at myspbc.org. Fire on Fridays is back this November at the St. Paul's Baptist Church. 
when I start praying, I pray like I already got the victory. When I think of the goodness of Jesus, my soul shouts. Go ahead and give God glory. Give him glory now. Don't miss Fire on Fridays at the St. Paul's Baptist Church. Go to myspbc.org for more. Thanksgiving is near, and we are here to help you with your dinner plans. If you live or plan to be in the Richmond area this Thanksgiving, please visit myspbc.info slash Thanksgiving Meals or call 804-643-6171 to place your order. We have many new food options, from full-course meals to side items to enhance your Thanksgiving celebration. We also have our usual items you love, like collard greens, macaroni and cheese, and potato salad, to name a few. All orders must be placed by noon, Thursday, November 17th. On our order form, you will also see an opportunity to donate. We hope you will support our efforts as we team up with members of our care and outreach teams and the diaconate to provide hot meals to a group of seniors and people experiencing specific disabilities. Our vision of finding needs and meeting them is embedded in all we do. Thank you for your time and attention. This has been The Scoop. Thank you for watching this service from the St. Paul's Baptist Church in Richmond, Virginia. Please look through our website, myspbc.org, to learn more about our church, about our vision, and how you can support our mission to empower people to grow into the persons that God created them to be.